G'day. Hopefully you're doing very well, keeping healthy and safe, and you're pretty good on this side of this. Now, throughout the years, I have covered the Dell W Series docks, and I thought this video is a bit overdue, as I thought I might just update it with this WD22TB4 dock. Now, this is a Thunderbolt 4 dock, so it does not need display link drivers. It's not a, what you call a universal dock, so and I am going to test this with a MacBook as well to show you how to run this in the dual monitor configuration. Now, I'll also do a comparison of the WD19TB and also the WD22TB4 dock, and also show you how to actually remove or replace the module at the end as well. Now, I'm going to do a quick comparison of the ports of the WD22TB4 which is the dock at the bottom, and also the WD19TB, that's the dock at the top. Now there is another dock in the series, which is the WD19TBS, and that's actually resembled kind of like in between between these two docks here, and the difference more closer to the WD19TB of course, but what it has missing is the headphone jack, as that was released around about where COVID time, and there was a shortage supply of the headphone jack, hence why they just pretty much did not have it, but also pretty much is the same as the WD-19 in terms of spec wise. Now, at the front here, you will see, uh, we're missing the headphone jack on the WD-22TB. I'm just gonna call this WD-22, it's easier, and the 19 is just easier for this part of this section. So, the still has the USB type A port, that is still 3.2 Gen 1, and also the USB type C port, again 3.2 Gen 2. And then we'll look on this side here and you'll see the, the security lock slots are still the same on there. Now we also, just looking at the top, quick top, is that we also have the power button, that hasn't changed at all. And then we're going to look on the back here, now this is probably where the major change you'll see here. So the 22 doesn't have the headphone jack like the 19 does, as you can see over there, as again, they just decide not to put that back in. And we've still got the display ports, that still is display port 1.4, so that's the same on these versions here, and still has the HDMI port, that still is a version 2 for the both 19 and the 22. This USB type C port is the 3.2 Gen 2, or else it still has the the display on, on these ones here, as you see with the nice little D symbol here. Now, USB Type A ports, they're the exact same, 3.2 Gen 1, and then RJ45 Ethernet, still the same, uh, as you see with the AC power, still the same barrel style, and so you can use reuse the old ones, which I do use. Now, this is the other major change with the 22 and the 19. So the 19, as you see, we've only got one port, and the 22 has two ports. Now, this is a Thunderbolt 3 port, these two are Thunderbolt 4 ports, just to let you know. Now, as for the cable, they're pretty much the same length here, so there's not much change. Now the texture is a little bit different between the actual 22 and the 19. The 22 is a little bit more rougher. Uh, I think this will test in time, but this is a little bit more smoother. As you can see, it's, it's had a bit of use, but it still does the exact same thing. But you both still can actually uh, dismount this component, this module here, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, but the same thing there. Now as for the operating temperature of the WD22TB dock, I've got this dock currently running for about an hour on triple display and it's also copying data between my two external drives for a USB-C drive and also a USB-A drive at the moment and the operating temperature of this while driving triple display, so I'm trying to max it out the surface looks to be at the most probably around about 35 degrees Celsius on, on the surface of the thing, and then we've got around about 37 at the bottom of the base. Now, as for my temperature of hand, just to give you an idea, I'm currently sitting at around about 35 to 36 degrees Celsius. Now, ambient temperature in this room is around about probably about 25 degrees Celsius, as it's a pretty hot night at the moment, and I haven't got anything on. And as for the sound of this dock, you're probably looking about 37 degrees Celsius decibels as I'll just shut up so you can see this but there you go it went down to about 36 decibels so it's a pretty much a silent dock the fan barely audible yes sometimes probably when you 
plug it in you might hear it but most of the time you don't really hear the actual fan itself that's really good and i was just going to show you the bottom here while we're at it just to give an idea so the base is a little bit hotter around about 39 degrees celsius so i'll take a guess it was hitting around about 39 degrees basically at the bottom but you won't really put much you won't, shouldn't be feeling the bottom of it most of the time but at the top it's actually operating pretty well now I'm going to show you how to remove this module here on the side. Now this is probably the same for the WD19S as well. So you can actually upgrade the S to this TB version as you just buy the WD22TB4 module. You can buy that separately or just replace which is great because this sometimes gets flurry and you need to replace this cable. So they do sell this by itself. Now first off you need to unscrew the two Philip head screw. That's very easy. I just pre-did this to save you time. And after that just find a prying tool. You need to pry it out. Now just give it a bit of a pry. I'm just going to show you how I've done it. And just give it a little bit. You've got a bit of wiggle. Then you've got to give it up a little bit of pry. Get about, I would say, oh, half a centimetre. Uh, in gap after that now you've got to do a special little way through food so i've got a little bit enough gap here now here's the trick to it you need to kind of lift it up uh, as well at the same time so i will get use two hands i'll put a finger where this bottom of this cable usb thunderbolt 4 cable here put it around here okay now you've got to try and wriggle wiggle it backwards and also upwards and back so do a wiggle 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 until you finally get this kind of like and now it's got a bit of an angle which is now a little, hopefully you see it's got a little bit of angle now it makes it it's out finally out of its port so just now completely wiggle it backwards uh, once you've got that nice little angle as you can see that's all angled the reason for that is because of this pc connector here so that's why you're gonna and then after that you can then just want to install another one it's just considered as a replacement just pop it down it's a lot easier to install anyway so and then pop it in and then replace the screws uh, screw it back in. That's it. Done. Now I'm going to demonstrate and also test out the WD22TB4 dock with a MacBook. Now the goal is to actually get dual extended monitor arrangement support for outputting to these two monitors. Now I currently do have a 14 inch MacBook Pro with me. This one has the M1 Max processor. This is with the exact same with an M1 or M2 or M3, whatever configuration, it's all going to be working the exact same way. Now I've done this in the past and it does need a special configuration to make it all work to get these two extended monitors working in this arrangement with a MacBook with the silicon processor. So currently I've got two 27 inch 4K monitors. Now the one here is actually connected by a USB-C port to the Thunderbolt port at the back. Now, because it's got two ports, it doesn't really matter which one you connect it to. One of the two is what you need. The main key is to actually connect the one of the monitors using the USB-C port at the back of the TB4 component of this WD22TB4. And then there's a one on the behind me is connected by display port to the dock. Now it doesn't really matter if whichever display port you want to use or use HDMI, it's all the same. Just as long as one of the monitors is connected by either display port or HDMI and the second monitor is connected by a USB-C. Now it can be under a uh, adapter it's probably not fantastic but it's probably better to actually have a natural USB-C monitor like this one here and then I'm going to actually now connect it up now I do have a wireless keyboard and mouse by which is just running the 2.4 gigahertz one so it's got a dongle just to give it a little bit more complexity to it and we're going to actually give that now a connection so I'm going to connect the MacBook with this 22 TB dock. So now I've got it. Now I've done this and this. I've arranged this so it makes it a little easier. So we'll hopefully we'll get this going. So I'm just refocusing the camera so you can actually see this display very nicely rather than in my face. So currently I've got all three monitors working and you can see this is in extended mode as we we're just moving it across. Now I do have the these two on 4k but i have made this one this monitor extra larger so we can actually see the display a little bit more better so i'm just going to select this one here which is in larger font but it does do the 
3840 by 2160. So it is a 4K monitor, so I can just see it, but we just can't see anything there, so I was trying to make it larger here. Now, under the arrangement, I can see at the moment, I'll just push this one here, so just makes it easier. Uh, and then we've got this now working very nicely here. Now I am charging at the moment, which is good. So it's purely using the power adapter, which means it is fully coming out of the dock. And before this recording, it was charging this MacBook Pro. But I had pretty much had quite a lot of charge ready. That's why it's not ready. But it's running purely off the power adapter, which means it is running purely off this dock now. But it was charging fantastically. I didn't get any errors out there at all. Which is great to see. Now I'm going to actually close the lid down. So we are now in dual monitor rather than using triples. We're using the built-in screen and here we go. Now I can see two monitors. Fantastic. And we are just going to quickly just show you the arrangement. See that as you can pull. That is fantastic here. And again, um, I'm just going to quickly just show you. Uh, we've got that going well. And we're going to actually do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to put this computer now to sleep to see if I can wake up using the power button. Now I have done this in the past and I'm just going to have to let you know that pretty much as this goes to sleep, it will, we'll see if this will wake up the dock and actually mirror on the MacBook. Now I've just pressed it. And at the moment, I don't hear anything going on. So I'll just press it one more time, see if we get a second time lucky on it. No, nope, it does not. So let's try just moving the mouse around. Oh, that has waken up. So using a mouse, oh, I'm very sure the same with the keyboard. I will put it to sleep with the keyboard and we'll have a look at it is waking the computer up and it's just asking for my password here. And that's fantastic. I'm just gonna put this computer back to sleep again. And we're going to try and wake it up with the keyboard here as this is still in the closed mode as the power button did not mirror the power button off the MacBook. Now it's gone to sleep, fantastic. I'm just going to press space, space, space. Let's try and see if we can wake it up. Just keyboard bashing. It's just a little top tip. Try and use like another key rather than the enter key. I know people would like to use the enter key, but sometimes when you press enter, it slows to wake up because it does take some time to display. You can actually press enter and it actually will enter in a blank password. It could lock you out. So use something else besides the enter key. Backspace is probably a good idea. I use Spacebar and then you will probably just see me using Backspace again. Anyway, that's it. It has woken up fantastic there. I know this question is going to be asked, so I'm going to answer this. Now, I know the WD22TB4 has actually more than just one USB-C port. So, it does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the module on the side and unfortunately I have tested this out. You can try actually connect another USB-C monitor or even through adapter. Unfortunately, it will not display a third external monitor using the extra Thunderbolt 4 port. So it's only capable of doing dual monitor for a MacBook. Now, as for the USB-Cs on the front and also the back of this, the non module part of the TB section, yeah, it will not, unfortunately, same idea, will not actually display the actual extended configuration. Now I'll just show that to you right now. So I'm just gonna take that out from here and I'm gonna connect that up to the back because the back one is the one that actually has the alternate display support. And as this is now just coming through, as because now at the moment you see this is only in dual monitor. So it is not able to actually do the extended display on the back here. So that's the exact same problem with the WD19S, as people might think that's a lot cheaper option. So you do need the WD22TB4 dock to run a MacBook with two external extended monitor support arrangement is what you actually need to actually run for a silicon processor MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. So that's the M1, M2 or M3. And now I'm gonna demonstrate a uh, Windows laptop connected to the WD22TB4 dock. Now this is the new Acer Swift Edge 16. Now this actually has new AMD Ryzen 7, which is the 7840U processor here. So this actually doesn't have Thunderbolt 
uh, four ports. This actually has the USB-C ports, but it is USB-C four ports anyway. So we're gonna actually get this connected. I've got this connected up, and it's as you can see, I've got two 27s and a 34 that's connected to this and special arrangement, which is basically this is still running on USB-C to the Thunderbolt four port at the WD22 TB component here, and it is now still in the extended mode. As you can see, I'm just moving that across so it's not in mirror mode, and I'm just gonna leave this on top. Now you can actually have this connected for four displays. I just don't have four displays on the screen here at the moment, so you can see, but it is able to support quad displays at 4K at 60 Hertz. So that's really nice. Now there is gonna be a bandwidth uh, table. I'm gonna just quickly shoot up so you can actually see on what those are. I'll put a link in the description below of those. So you can actually see what inputs to be actually achieve certain resolutions and also the actual refresh rates on that down there. Now, at the moment, I know people are gonna ask me, could you actually connect a display to the front USB-C port? Unfortunately, it does not support the display alternate mode here on the front. The back one does, so you could use that one at the back, but if you've got the Thunderbolt version here, you're just better off using the Thunderbolt 4 versions at the back as that will give you more bandwidth anyway, so just so you know that. But still, you can actually run dual display ports and also HDMI to get triple and then you get the fourth display will actually come through the better to actually use the the Thunderbolt 4 port as it has more bandwidth rather than the one on the back uh, the USB-C port at the back which is 3.2 gen 2 ports anyway uh, for at the back that USB-C as for the power delivery or the charging for the WD22TB4 dock, you can get up to 90 watts to a non-Dell device. And if you connect a Dell device, then you can get up to 130 watts, just to give you an idea of its charging rate. If you're looking to purchase the Dell WD22TB4 dock and you wish to actually support this channel, I do have affiliate links for you to purchase this dock under. Now I'll put all those Fill links and down in the description below. Now, if you do use them, I do receive a bit of commission, but it shouldn't be any extra cost to you. But it does go helping this channel out. Now, I hope you find this video informative and enjoyed it. If you did, even support my channel, smash that like button for me and share this video. It does help me out. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.